I'm going to give a little bit of a summary from Inspired Talks uh, out of several pages that I read that I thought summed up our situation quite nicely. He tells us that we've made a prison out of our environment and that we've done that by allowing the vision of God in his entirety to be objectified. And what that means is to set it in opposition to ourself. That's how we imprison ourselves: is by making God other so that he becomes objectified. And we, that self, the only reality, then set ourselves in opposition to, to this other reality, which actually is not a reality, it's an, a superimposition. And normally we just kind of shrug our shoulders at that and think, okay, yeah, superimposition, that's, that's cool. But it's very real in, in the way that it works, in that we take this, this world, or we take God as we experience that, in through the senses, and we create a superimposition on the mind. We, we take this information and create a symbol of that information on the surface of the mind, as it were. And then we, as the eternal self, look at it, setting ourselves in opposition with this superimposed image, partial image, of the divine, objectified and, and projected onto mind. Set ourselves in opposition to it. And really the only way out is unification, which is the highest ideal of love. It is the end game of love. The end game of all love is unification, that one without a second. And the only way to that unification is by the full acceptance of that truth. And that truth being that alignment of inner integrity between what you think, what you say, and what you do, which is absolutely necessary for that singleness of mind in order to, to, to escape the idea of this superimposed world being the real world and understanding that the inner self, the projector, is the source, is the real self, and to bring our attention to that through truth, which means that in every moment we're willing to give up whatever is necessary in pursuit of truth. That's the detachment. That's the letting go. That at every moment, if we think we're doing something unhelpful or untrue, which involves the changing universe, we're instantly willing to let go, to change that behavior and move on. And we see this in, in the devotion of Brother Lawrence, where he says, whenever he found himself engaged in vice or doing something that was making him forget the divine or taking his mind from the divine, he would simply stop put his mind back on the divine, apologize for the situation, and then move on. He didn't go through any gyrations of self-hatred or any necessity of guilt in order to change or beat himself up for his failures. He simply took his mind off of what was distracting him from the beloved, put it back on the beloved, apologized, and kept going. And through that means, he came to realization and we can boil that down just for the fun of staying consistent with almost everything we always talk about and say that you can, you, can, you can boil that down into this single moment. In this moment, think of God. Think of your highest ideal of love. Ruminate on that. Keep it in your mind. Concentrate on it. Focus on it. And let it manifest through you. And all you have to do is in each experience of the moment, if you find your mind is not on the beloved, put it there, feel the inspiration, and let the action come accordingly. There you have it. A summary of three pages from the Inspired Talks from Swami Vivekananda.